at Copel TV Repair and I'm making a video today mostly for the sake of a customer whose board we're repairing that's a plasma buffer board and uh, what I'm going to be discussing is probably going to be of use to very few people because there will be very few people doing what we do here uh, repairing those plasma buffer boards that are not even in production anymore most of the people with skills to do that are probably doing better paid uh, things than repairing obsolete now buffer boards but for one reason or another uh, we are doing it here and uh, I will show this customer the problem that we had with this buffer board because it is part of a set that we repaired the sustain board for and then customer said it worked once and then the TV stopped working again and then he returned all three boards to us uh, this one wasn't repaired before the SC board was but the SC board was good there was nothing wrong with it nothing of the repair that we have done and this raises the usual suspicion if, if I was a customer I know I would have been thinking you know, they probably screwed up something now they're milking me for more money and whatnot uh, so I'm gonna show what exactly happened customer can see their uh, identification here and just to wrap up the issue with uh, suspicions and, and possible faults, even though customer did not accuse of, of anything, I happen to be highly sensitive towards this type of topic because I put up with a lot of stupidity and, and, and malicious behavior in, in the world, in my role of a TV repair guy with a customers always knowing better than us what we do and um, vendors uh, accusing us of things and customers accusing and eBay accusing us of things. I'm really, really sensitive. I try to do things right. And when there is a shadow of doubt, I would like to set the record straight. Plus, this will be educational for some people. Again, very few, but uh, I hope those few that it will help. It, it, it can be really beneficial. So. Uh, the buffer boards are systems in plasma TVs that convert serial signal to parallel signal. Serial because it goes in them in form of a single line of 0 and 1 and it comes out through all those for all the individual horizontal lines uh, if they're um, sustain and not address uh, the, the horizontal lines buffer boards very few plasma tvs have those on the address lines which are the vertical lines in the plasma panel but it's the same principle most of the plasmas have those those converters built into a tab at the bottom of the panel i've seen very few who do have them vertically but the same principle applies so uh <coughs> what is happening is the every single horizontal line in the panel uh, which is you know uh, a table of um, a matrix of horizontal and vertical lines and all the horizontal lines are being engaged with a sustained uh, output voltage which is a high voltage so many times per second and however many times they are uh, being engaged that is however many times the voltage is being set up uh, per second uh, the, that determines the color of the individual pixel in a combination of course with the with the vertical line so what this board does is so many times per second it sends either high voltage or no voltage and in some cases negative voltage in order to clear up the screen but that doesn't really matter um, to the panel and what this buffer does is it takes in all the information about which lines need to be set up uh, with high voltage or clear down and so many times per second it sends that output voltage which is high it varies between let's say two roughly 270 to minus 160 relative to something that's called floating ground it sends it for every single line out of that buffer here out of that connector every single one of those pins has a different value which again has only few 
digital uh, distinct values, but they change so often times per second. And what those guys do, the ICs here, are their shift registers with very powerful output switch transistors and they're being filled as a shift registers uh, with information that is basically boolean zero or one binary and uh, so many times that determines whether output voltage goes out or not the output voltage is supplied through the connector so the system actually has two set of voltages one is the output voltage that has to be showing up on each one of those pins uh, depending on whether the pin is enabled or not, it should either show up or not show up so many times per second. And then there is the low voltage needed for the logic that operates all those ICs uh, that are on the buffer board. That's usually 5 volts. And you have two different sets of voltages. One, again, is the output, and it has its own ground, which varies. And the other is the standard 5 volts that are uh, 5 volts measured to ground usually even though that's not ground in the case this would be the ground and they're separated and a shift register is a register that when you uh i will go to the other drawing in a minute is something that inside flows zeros and ones and every time it flows zeros and one it pushes down the information that is in every individual cell and when you push so many down, you basically fill up the, the register, and each one of those is a valid output. And if this shift register has one, two, three, four, five cells, in five steps, you putting zeros and ones can fill that up. And usually there is another signal down here that says, okay, now that you fill them up, flush them to the outside. It's called flush or set or enable or... Uh, my terminology would be a little confusing to people who are good with those things and i do apologize about that i'm trying to show the whole principle of how things work uh, but i would be the first to admit that my terminology might be slightly lacking again i apologize about it so here's what a buffer board is and um, it has all those ic's those ones and they're connected in a serial fashion the output and every single one has an input that takes data in a serial fashion that was zero and one going in and every time zero one goes in it fills in the top cell and all others are being shifted down the opposite order first everything is being shifted down and then the very top is being populated with whatever came in but the output goes to the next IC. It serves for the input for the next IC. And so, if you have so many of those registers connected in a serial fashion, you can fill up so much bits of information uh, with so many steps or clock turns of this. I'm not showing all the wires that are going in. Uh, this serial data is not just being pushed in zeros and ones. There is a, another line here that tells it now get the value. It's called a clock. Uh, it doesn't really matter for the sake of this explanation. The heavy work and the, the, the power here goes out to the output transistors, which change simple zeros and ones in a binary logic to actually high volt switches for the panel. And when a buffer board fails, usually what happens is one of those output transistors here that takes the high voltage, this is the uh, sustained voltage, and that goes out to the panel, it goes to every single one of those ICs, of course. And the transistors just switch that input depending on whether there is a zero or one in the according cell of the switch to the output. And usually those transistors burn because they do a, a lot of heavy lifting. It's not so much current that they're doing, it's the, the very quick change from one value to another that causes them to produce a lot of heat and that ages them over time and that's why they burn. So usually when a buffer board fails, uh, the output pin here shorts down to the ground. And the way to test those, as I have shown in other videos and articles many, many years ago, is to just measure the resistance between the floating ground and every single pin to the output. And when you do that, 
you find out what is shorted and you find out tracing back to the IC which one is shorted, you remove it, the short disappears, you replace it, everything's good and fine. However, in some very, very rare cases, like in this board, the output is fine and you don't find anything that is shorted on the output. Instead, there is a short somewhere here on the 5 volts or in the data lines. In other words, the operational logic that drives those transistors for whatever reason failed and shorted. And the problem with that is there is no easy way because of all those, see the power to all those ICs, the 5 volts, is the same. It goes to every single one of them. Let me see what is here. Yeah, this is like this. So the 5 volts go to every single one of them. They're all connected in parallel. And there is another line probably that goes uh, very often when there are shift registers. There is another input line that tells which way they should be turning, upside down or downside up. It can be configurable input and output, the input can be output, the output can be input, and so on and so forth. But let's just take the power. So if you have low resistance here between the 5 volts and the normal ground, uh, which drives the logic of just just the operational logic, not the switching portion, just you know all the all the switching of the shift registers. There is no easy way to know which one of those guys has failed. What's more, all of them, and in case of that buffer board, there's a little bit more logic outside of the ICs. Uh, this is not so common for buffer boards. Many, many of them don't have any of that. They just have the ICs. But even in that case, very often on the power here, there are small capacitors on each one of them uh, that are just noise filters that are close to the ICs. And sometimes those could have shorted too. And there is simply no easy way to tell was it a capacitor? Was it some of the ICs? Which of the ICs? And this is exactly what has happened with that board. And again, this is customer's board coming back to explain what are we doing and why. The way to solve that is basically you just have to interrupt the connection between, usually you try in groups here. You, you break that power that powers those two IC, you separate it from the rest, and then you have another two ICs, and then the same power you interrupt somewhere else, and you see where you have shortage. And this is what I'm going to be showing here. This is exactly what we have done. Uh, this is where the 5 volts go in, I believe. Let me see real quick. This is where 5 volts go in, and this testing point, TPSD24. From there, they go to that filter capacitor here and to the IC. And as you can see, here is where we've cut the power to isolate where did it go. And then we cut it in another place. Was it on the back? Let me see. I know we've cut it on another place. And I will have to find out where it is. Okay, here's another one to make sure that it doesn't go on the, on the top. And basically, we just cut and isolate. And this was very difficult with this board uh, because it's so hard to find a place where you can nicely cut the track without damaging because almost everywhere it has very tiny tracks everywhere around it. So we cut here, we cut here, we narrowed it down to this IC uh, because it, it stayed up here to this capacitor and from up there they were nice enough to actually have had those resistors for the rest of the components all those so the power goes to those optic drivers and those buffer ICs but luckily it goes through the small resistors of 3 ohms or 10 ohms in this case and it was easy to remove those and see that uh, the circuits down there are fine they were not short and the short was on this main line for power so we came to here Remove the IC um, and the short was still there. And it is still there because the 5 volts, in addition to going to that filter cap and to the power of the IC, go through this small jumper, 0 ohms, and go to another pin of the IC. And from the bottom through that hole here next to the 0 ohm resistor, they go also to all the other ICs. So there is another line in this case. Uh, which takes the 5 volts and sends it everywhere. It's not power, it's probably some configuration that uh, does all that. And um, whatever 
whatever the reason, uh, this is what, what got shorted. And then I ended up cutting a very tiny line, basically because they go extremely small. Uh, because they don't carry power, they're just configurational, that, that is either high voltage or, or not. And you have to go and cut the same way the, the wire to each individual IC. And in this case, there it is here, let me see if I can zoom it in. Uh, it's either the direction in which the shift is going, but anyhow, I was lucky the very first IC that I cut off was the one that, that was bad. This is the tiny wire that comes from here. This hole up, uh, I've cut through. And this basically isolated that IC as being bad. So we'll have to replace those two. We'll have to jump together everything on the board. Uh, of course, put it in a TV, make sure that it works. Took a lot of time, but basically that's what it is. There is another way to do such things sometimes. Uh, it's basically heating up an IC and measuring that resistance that is that is low. It's still low if I measure it here on the other side of interrupted uh, interrupted track. It will still be like uh, 4 or I don't remember how many, 10 ohms or something like that or 8. Uh, if you heat that, the resistance will start increasing faster than if you heat other ICs. The problem with that approach is it works well when there are no heat sinks. Uh, there are buffer boards without heat sinks. Another way is to go with infrared camera. Uh, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. This is basically the most reliable one, the one with isolating. And if this was properly designed, it would have had jumpers at proper places here so that one can easily separate. Uh, you wouldn't have to cut through tracks like that. All they had to do was just put a jumper between every pair of two and that would easily allow narrowing down things. But almost nobody does that. So hopefully that helped both the customer understand that we are not Mill Kingdom. I mean, nobody in their right mind would spend all the time digging through all that, putting together apparently if this wasn't indeed bad. Uh, it's not going to pay off the, the amount that we are charging. And that's one of the reasons I'm making this video, at least. Hopefully people will see that we are good at what we do and they can trust us. Uh, we're not going to make money off that repair. But it's going to work out fine, and we're going to replace the two ICs, and um, hopefully I help the customer be certain that we're indeed troubleshooting a program and charging them right for an actual failure and not just milking them for warranty repair, and hopefully help somebody learn something new and how to troubleshoot. I'm sure I left a lot of information. I'm sure somebody may find my voice uh, Kermit-like. For all those people, have a life. <laughs> and for everybody else, have a very good day and good luck with your repairs.